rolling out the uh, the new Hangout. Google Hangout dial-out app that it suggested when I installed uh, Hangout here just a little bit ago. So I downloaded oh. the app, I installed it, but of course I haven't tried it. I'll, I'll probably give it a try sometime this week. Yeah, so I I, I was going to put, I, I was, whoever does can change the uh, uh, invite to the, to the team. Uh, I was going to put in, until the 21st, I was going to put in the uh, take out the phone number and or I was going to suggest doing that and put in your phone number if you want us to dial out to you. Uh, they also uh, in the announcement of the said um, pretty much Europe and Asia they have and I don't know if there's charges or whatever uh, they have a bunch of countries anyway. Uh, so anyway that's kind of uh, I, I think it's worth just waiting for that for the moment, rather than uh, make huge efforts to do other, uh, you know, get Uber working or whatever. Hey, uh, Lauren. Hey. Yeah. Well, actually, first I have a question. Did I misunderstand? I thought that the, the, the or the full rollout of being able to dial up from Google is, is, is it May 20th? Like, it's not here yet, correct? Uh, that's what they um, said, but they may have rolled it out early. If okay. Michael Michael ran across um, a new feature, okay. to answer one question you just brought up, I'm the one that set up the that notification that goes out, and that brings me to the one thing that I plan on doing next week and my process improvement person. Just throw that in one of the Wikispeed Trello boards and assign me to it, and I'll get that taken care of to change some wording. That that'll be just a few minutes, so I can easily do that. Um, also, we had the idea of bandwidth issue by dialing into the previous number we used to use for conference calls, which was the freeconferencecall.com number. Uh, so we might be able to, I mean, we'll have to do some testing. Like you said, we have to test that. But if we can dial out to a number, um, we might be able to use that old number that's still set up for Wikispeed. It's, I mean, I don't think we've used it in three or four years now, but it's still there. It's the first thing I ever called into. Um, but uh, Griff, and the question would be if we can dial anything after we dial the number, because that that number actually requires like an access code after after the number's dialed. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, the new the new one rolling out on the twenty first. If you uh, if there's an option to uh, list a conference number. Oh my God! This sounds amazing. Like. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll have to test it out uh, once they get yeah. uh, they get uh, once the features are available. Yeah. Is but again, anything and, in and, Google ever out of beta? <laughs> well, true, true, true. Well, it seems to work really good until it doesn't. But I'm sure they worked really hard on that first stage. And then somebody went to a different department. But yeah, like I said, feel free to add me. Uh, you. you I'm like authorizing as much as we're against the, let's say, feel free to add me as a member on anything related to this or anything that helps remove blocks for y'all. And cool. uh, if I have time, I'll, I'll work on it. Yeah, like I said, it'll just get it on my radar. Cool. Okay. Great. Um, are we up to crosstalk? I, I thought that was crosstalk. Um, no, uh, <laughs> I uh, I'm just just making sure everybody is done with their uh, with their stand up because uh, William had uh, an email about what looked like a summer student or maybe I'm it was it was a little uh, Michael uh, so is uh, that is that in Linwood or is that at your local location or where is it that exactly No, that is actually in Linwood. He was not in Vegas. I believe he okay. is going to school somewhere in Texas. Uh, I and apologies, uh, I forget his name right now. It's, it's probably low blood sugar, actually. It's an impediment. But uh, I do remember he applied in 2016. He also applied to JPL for their internship. And we had a great discussion at length saying, well, if he gets accepted at JPL, please take it. We, we don't want to compete <laughs> against that. For one, like we'll always be there. So you know, if you want to intern with us, 
yes, we, we will of course consider you again. And so thus, he has spent, now we will consider uh, collaborating. And I've uh, been in, in email talks with Joe as well to put together a backlog and a expectations and such in oh, order excellent. for him to, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, onboarding and everything, but I think that that's taken care of by listing a number that works. Yeah, basically, the number hasn't worked for a while, and it appears mm -hmm. that I've been trying to dial in and not, not being able to. So. Yes, there have been people that have dialed in and gotten, or an email went to the info at Wikispeed account, and I didn't realize that until much later. Yeah, I, 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 we just need a notification that goes out because what ends up actually happening is if like four people dialed into that phone number, they could all talk to each other, but they wouldn't be talking to you unless you initiated that Uber conference call as Wikispeed info. Um, inside of Google Hangouts. But yeah, you can actually talk to each other on that call. But yeah, it's not automated. If a person does not initiate that Uber conference, add this conversation to those people. So. I, I will add uh, one condition on there, that you need to have enough bandwidth to support it, because I have actually tried that, and uh, it kills my bandwidth. Um, so even when I turn off video and, and everything else, it still isn't enough bandwidth for me to carry the conversation. I, I'm, again, we discussed this. I'm amazed that that's even an issue. I mean, I'm not I'm not doubting it, but I'm amazed that's even an issue with how that should work <laughs> inside of the cloud as opposed to having anything to do with your bandwidth. But uh, but again, I think that's something that we're going to maybe, maybe try and... and this upcoming sprint, uh, or, or actually, whenever it's available from Google, to mm -hmm. if that dial out feature to a different conference call, which we actually it could be that Uber, I mean the Uber conference number that would actually make, make more sense than using the old free conference call number, right? Is using the current Uber conference number that we know works and just dial in it also, and maybe uh, you know that'll that'll tie everything back together. Um, Lauren, I was going to talk about the open source software repository, what's it called? Oh, uh, are you talking about Git? Yes, Git. So, uh, using the uh, open source AC and DC controllers, uh, Paul uh, is incredible. Uh, so, if uh, I knew just a little bit more, like a cheat sheet about here's how you do an update and, uh, Here's how you do a fork and uh, and uh, you know do a commit yeah. and no I don't I don't think I'm going to get to the point where I can actually do a, a merge but yeah I, I have not uh, bothered it's for learning it's kind of neat to use the Windows uh, thing called Tortoise which is a click and point but mm -hmm. I haven't set it up it's a little bit of a nuisance to set it up so for the uh, uh, IRS uh, charitable status drafts. I just been doing command line. <laughs> it's, in a sense, command line's way easy. There's a really short commands. They're like, uh, gosh, four. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to point to those. Right now, we're using SourceForge. We have it. I don't have GitHub set up, okay. but I edited. It. I'll pull pull the stuff out. Because I have a junk, bunch of junk in it, but I'll pull pull out that that will basically set you up a little repository. And uh, uh, for now, I'm going to uh, get into GitHub. But that's yeah, that's something I like to do. Because uh, okay. get on. I'm sorry. Is the first command get her done? I'm just. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the first the commands do begin with git. <laughs> Okay, and uh, don't know into this uh, into this U.S. Marine Corps thing, um, but if there's not a whole lot uh, more input, I'm not sure if I'll continue working on it or if I'll send Rob what we've got. Uh, I think the size of a of a pallet that is supposed to be airdropped out of a plane 
with 500 pounds of cargo and survive and then autonomously go to a, a location. They are, uh, they're, they're trying to find people with grand visions and ideas, not necessarily so, practic so practical right now. Um, but some of the stuff that uh, these guys are coming up with is pretty far out. Uh, I, I'm interested. I, I believe that one of them was the, the older uh, Mars land. I love that. Uh, a parachute system that is used presently, but they don't want to give it to us as a description because they don't want uh, that to, you know, for everybody to come up with grand new visions of how it works. And uh, honestly, the uh, something out of a plane and having it survive and not end up upside down or sideways are, are a big enough challenge by themselves. You don't need the rest of the challenge. <laughs> We just need super balloon tires. <laughs> well, without a shoot, terminal velocity is 135 mile an hour. So that's why I said super. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I'm being too practical. <laughs> anyway. Um, Michael, I would ask seriously though: Is wh wh so? Where is the uh, where where is the? It's one thing I have I've glanced at those emails, but I haven't had a chance to really read all of them. So, where is the entry at now, and uh, where sh where should it go? If so, there were people uh, willing to help out. Well, um, the the entry is done. Uh, given the first set of assumptions that we got, which is it's got to be four feet cubed. And it's got to survive the landing, so we're kind of fuzzy on the parachute. We're assuming it lands on uh, it lands on a egg crating of some sort on a big pallet, and that uh, you can it'll unpack itself and roll away after that. Um, after that, we got information um, that it can be bigger than four feet cubed because that's how it's got to get. Uh, air transported to the area, but once they load it with stuff, it will be larger than that. But since they say that they know there is a practical limit to how big it can be, just because you are everything takes weight, right? I want it to be able to transport uh, injured people back to a lifting site. So it's got to expand from four feet to about six or seven feet in order to actually hold someone inside and not get, have them get wet. You've also got to uh, climb a 60 degree slope, uh, go on a 40 degree side slope, and cross 24 inches of water in a stream uh, without getting the cargo wet. So it's got some mechanical sketches, um, a little bit of uh, flushing out on like pictures of what you think it should look like. And anything that you have that we can figure out on a suspension would be helpful. Because the suspension is going to take a total free association. But I don't know if you've heard about this around the time of uh, Katrina and Haiti earthquake. Mm -hmm. There's this uh, crazy physicist who had a very extreme libertarian or right-wing talk show named Bill Wattenberg. He, he introduced himself as the world's smartest man. But he, uh -huh. he had a, uh, the, a four, uh, whatever it is, a small water bottle, six or four ounces. Mm -hmm. If you drop those, they can't hurt someone. But for some reason, the water, is it the resistance or whatever, keeps the velocity down. And they, mm. don't, they don't break. So he said, don't drop crates of water drop, you know, just dump the, all the water bottles out. And likewise, they had, um, uh, you know, cliff bar, energy bars, just drop the energy bars. I was a kind of brainstorm or a out of the box okay. idea he came up with. So I, that's not really helpful for what they want, but mm -hmm. for what it's worth. So the wiki speed frame. Uh, the frame has the batteries stored in it, 
and then the wheels kind of it's a, it's kind of like an origami thing. If they fold out of the corners, yeah, they can move, but they've got three or four uh, kind of um, locked in positions, and the locked in positions, um, the servos take them to a place. You put a pin in, and it, you put a pin into a rubber block essentially that gives you a little bit of flex. So you've, you, have you watched those uh, ro uh, Mars rover landings? I, I have, and uh, did you ever figure out how those things righted themselves if they were upside down? Uh, that, was, that was part of their plan, if I remember correctly, is that... <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so the the bouncy ball thing, I remember. I remember that they blew a couple of the balloons, but that wasn't a big deal. And I thought that the whole idea was that they deflated them in order, so it, it ended up right side up. Yeah. But that makes I, sense. I, I don't know exactly, like, because they don't want this thing to bounce half a mile after they drop it. <laughs> well, Maybe they do. They're also they're also talking about rough terrain. They want this thing to go over bumps and rocks and tree stumps and stuff. Like this is a big ask. Eh? So if we automate, the, we 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 use a, a little. Come to my end. <laughs> well, there, there's actually a follow me mode that they want, so that it like uh, if the Marines deploy with it that it actually follows them along. That I think we can do with tags. That, that won't be too difficult to do when they can steer the wheels and that they haven't been squashed if, as you drop it out of the plane. Uh, yes, yeah, so are you familiar with who bought Segway? Uh, Lumi, I think it's called, or something like that? Uh, Lumi was the one that's actually out of local I.O., right? It looks like a... Uh, but the wheels are quite small. Oh, I know. Maybe it's something else, but to, uh, anyway, so some companies acquired uh, Segway, and they have oh. what they call uh, a, uh, a transport. So now nobody uh, the the Segways have evolved. So if you go into Fry's now, they have what it, it what it is now, which is a um, uh, it's it looks like a Segway, but there's no bar to hold on to. You. It, 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 it's like boots, and you put your feet in, and then it balances you, and, and it goes. But in addition to that, it's now a little follow-me robot that carries things. Okay. So it would be nice if they were like Tesla and put their open source uh, okay. thing. There's now also, um, gosh, I have a, a, a Make magazine with a uh, unicycle, which is actually, uh, it's... It's a tiny little wheel, so it doesn't look like a unicycle. Uh, it, it, likewise, you put your feet in, it's like miles an hour or something like that. Uh, okay. So it, 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 the whole thing's evolved a whole lot, and uh, uh, very cleverly, because I, I always wanted to, I want, I want my running and walking exercise, but I want to be able to pick up groceries and have mm. the, my, my servant follow me. <laughs> So, uh, not not to be contradictory, uh, Lauren, but uh, um, Tesla did open source their patents. They right. most uh, insanely did not open source any of their, and they are actively hostile to anyone trying to reverse engineer it. So, so comparing them to open source is, is not a good comparison. <laughs> well, right, Michael. Have, have you been able to find any of those patents available to read yet? Uh, yeah, you can you can find the patents. Uh, you can read the patents in the legalese that they're in. Um, okay. But what they're patenting is the idea, right? So they have some. Uh, they, they have like how to do, how to do right. ABS that kind of stuff. My, I mean, my point is they announced that they were that they like you can yes. find it now. I mean, it took it, it took so, right after that was announced. It was impossible to find that information. Mm -hmm. But, but hey, um, jokingly, uh, in this vehicle challenge, has anyone just made an entry that is market? Yep. And that's the only thing. Okay, good. Um, and second, my, my my real question, seriously, is uh, when is the next phase due? And uh, 
maybe we can build a backlog to that. And again, feel free to tag me in it, and I'll pick up as much of that as, as I can. But but the real question is, when is the next phase due, and what and what are the requirements uh, for them? So, Not so this, that's the wrong word. Uh, when, what's the due date, and what are the requirements for that due date? Uh, May 7th is the due date. Uh, what you need is a description of uh, your your project, and you've got to have uh, a description of the use cases. The first one is delivering water. The second one is delivering uh, medical supplies. And the third one is taking a casualty to a specific spot. So okay. those, are, those are the big ones, and uh, they're, they're going to see if it... See if it survives the landing. You well, can't, apparently. They're not asking that yet, right? They're, they're really asking about what happens after it's on the ground. Um, but they're not asking. You don't have to describe the size of the chute. You don't have to describe this, uh, oh, I need four feet of travel on the uh, suspension in order to absorb this shock. Or, uh, you know, the clearance on one side has to be uh, 37 inches in order to keep you level when you're going across a stream. And yeah, da 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 da, right? Uh, right. They're, they're asking for blue sky stuff. Right. Uh, but I mean, I think the next due date that they have, if I'm not, if, I, mean, I mean, I could be completely misunderstanding, but that, that is particularly about the, like those three to four. And uh, uh, that's yep. just like at the top, the rest can be sketched out right before the deadline. And I do. And again, I, I usually try to start off with a joke, but here's the thing uh, that. Hell, that's tomorrow. I mean, it's not really. It's like, but it's like four days from now, so it's basically yep. tomorrow. <laughs> yep. So, and, uh, I don't know. I, if you're interested in it, I would love to jump in and do anything I can. Uh, but I think, like, if we just make an entry that's, well, the design we have is that you would attach water, people, this, that, the, the, the three or four things to it that, that keeps, keeps you in the running to expound upon it like we don't have enough people man uh, you know like people resources to work on like the three different projects that is right now right? uh no um and they do uh like the next section of the uh um they're going to be asking for parts lists um sub assembly drawings uh that kind of stuff so this, wait, okay, this so one when, they're gonna this one that? they're the way that they do it is they uh, choose uh, a first place and a second place, and then five uh, judges' choices, they, they call them. Kind of get an idea of what direction they're leaning, and then you can help the guys that won first, second, or one of the judges' choices. Like, you can ask if you can join their team, or you can take your entry that didn't really win anything but um, you can tailor it toward their solution or their, their kind of approach and see if you can uh, you know, make, make it further. But they're offering very little in the way of money, and they have an ask that is huge in terms of resources. So I, I thought and maybe get it to the point where we could have a, a motor module front and back, although the motor module might look a little different. Well, that didn't work out real well. Uh, this one, I'm interested in hearing and in the um, follow me kind of stuff. But again, we're not getting to work on it because we're trying to address the, well, how do we let someone load a 250-pound Marine into something that, looks like Lego and expanded from a fourth foot cube. I'm not sure that it makes sense to put any time into this. I just, I was wondering if anybody was interested in looking at it and just battering around some ideas. Yeah. Well, again, that's the first question. Is there any value in it? Whether it be monetary or marketing or, or just getting people engaged. In it. Um, I, I don't but, know. I know a little bit of our entry at the, uh, on the uh, well, we already entered. You can put that on the resume for for the nonprofit status. I mean, that's that's no issue. Uh, this, uh, my only point is, if you're interested in any aspects of it, I mean, we can get through this next one. Like, if there's mainly three things, 
we can use exactly what Lauren said, which is, well, we're, we'll use something like the original Mars landing. Boom. That's that's one sentence. And mm-hmm. that can be expounded when it be, comes down to that's part of the challenge, right? So mm-hmm. that's like marked off. That's one sentence. That's marked off. And then just focus on the next part. But again, like I said, it's really only might going to be if you're the one that's interested. But, oh, um, I, my comment is that uh, it does generate a lot of uh, people jumping on who no, we haven't see, heard from before, just because it's sort of fun and interesting. But uh, I get, yeah, I, you know, I, I, uh, uh, I think we should like look at the value of it too. Uh, I kind of saw it as uh, just a stimulation to think, and uh, uh, you know, I, it, I mean, it was the, the other one was really interesting. But it, it also took a lot of your times, Michael. So, uh, well, and I'm, I'm actually thinking through the car in general. Um, so I, I might just drop it and just leave it as as the uh, application that it is. Um, yeah. It is interesting and instructive to go on the site and make comments and suggestions on other people's entries, uh, which I which I've done a little bit of. Anyway. <laughs> Two people who are kind of very creative. Uh, who, who uh, not not the usual thing. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> uh, well, what they're uh, they're they're partnered with uh, local IO, which local motors is what they crowdsource stuff. The Marines did for the previous challenge was they actually took um, a Kawasaki Mule and a Polaris Ranger. A razor, I think, and they basically took them apart um, on site and put rails on them and welded stuff up and basically came up with their own kind of modular vehicles. But they started with with existing vehicles, so there was only so much they could do to the frame. There was only so much they could do to the drivetrain because it had to fit. The last challenge they. They were asking, well, well, what other things could we do? What other drivetrains could we use that are maybe not normally used, like electric or hydraulic or whatever? And uh, that was the idea is to come up with something that was in it with 40 or 50 standard parts. So this one is disaster relief. And what they're trying to come up with is something that they can actually kind of send off on its own or drop out of a plane and have it uh, like I, like I mentioned in my in my stand-up uh, people don't want to read people want to look at 3d CAD and turn it around and go ooh ah and play with the little little pieces and and have it spark their imagination so my complete lack of CAD skills is a little bit of a block Anyway, um, uh, like uh, you know, I, I think that the whole the the issue, you know, that's for me. That, that applies to me too. I mean, I'm I'm using uh, Blender to edit videos just because it has a language. Uh, you could uh, uh, so there's a command line for editing video in Blender. I think it's Python or something. Likely. <clears throat> we can bring it up with the intern uh, once it gets onboarded. I think it's right somewhere around the time, but as far as meeting the deadline, which is what, May 21st? No, May 7th, right? Yeah. May 7th. Yep. I don't think we're going to have like a 3D test somewhere around uh, mid, mid late uh, May because he's got to finish up mm-hmm. school. So. Yeah. I mean, it, if we can submit it with, there's our, you know, unfortunately, it's all kind of line item and numbers. Like, here's the stuff. Maybe in about, mm-hmm. you know, in a couple of iterations or sprints, we can get a 3D mock up of something or maybe a, a wireframe of something that we could do that we're thinking of. Uh, we're mm-hmm. just you know, a little slow at getting it. Yeah, and I mean, they have, uh, they have uh, requirements or not requirements. Uh, 
they have a deadline and, and they have you know descriptions that they want to want to meet and stuff like that. Now that's fine. Um, it's uh, everybody does what they can with the resources they have, right? There would be uh, there would be no uh, no no, and that whoever had something that was half uh, thin would be the guys they'd go with, right? I mean, because that's that's about all they can do, right? Yeah, so, but uh, who knows about what other competi uh, competitors have until I think we have something substantial to show, then we can go from there. Well, yeah. Yeah. I guess it could be. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Process improvement suggestion. Yeah. Um, okay. Where the the entry that has that exists as of now, like a username and password that you need to log into to update that thing? Yep. So my, my process improvement would be this immediate team, and if we have time before the 7th, we might jump in there and get a headline. If you uh, log in, what's your name and the password? Cool. Awesome. Done and done, right? Nice. Yep. Perfect. And I'll, I'll upload this into YouTube, so for those who have access, uh, you know, we're not just going to hand out... Uh, Access to our would be speed of info, but uh, if you if you have access, you know how to do it. So there you go. Yep. Well, that's the point. All right, gentlemen. All right. So hopefully, talk to you next week. Absolutely. Awesome. We'll let you know. I appreciate all, every one of you. All right. Thanks, you guys. Take care. Thanks.